Tonight on Super Nanny, Joe visits her biggest family ever. The Costello family has 10 kids. This is a very large family, to say the least. And even more may be on the way. I'm happy with 10. Well, why should, you know, that's his opinion. I'm allowed to mine. I don't agree with that. The oldest son is forced to act as a third parent, and the pressure is killing him. It's too much. I've gotten sick over it. I, I've had one panic attack before. Plus, mom has a hard time keeping her cool. You stop it. We're not, I'm not doing anything. So you stop it from happening. You're the oldest one out there. You don't just sit there and watch it. When Joe learns dad has a dark secret, it changes everything. Can Joe help them recover? If Joe don't want this enough, then everyone's going to pay the price for that. Or will the biggest family Joe has ever helped be too much for her to handle? Well, you know what? Right now, I need to take a breather. You're with me in Medina, Ohio. So let's take a look at this family. Hi, we're the Costello family. I'm Amy. And I'm Dale. And we have 10 kids. Logan is 15. Harley is 14. Chaslin, who is 12. Joelle is 9. Mm -mm, 11. 11. Corbin, who is uh, sep, uh, 9. Corbin is 9. Addison, who is seven. Nolan, five. Bryson, three. Cameron, two. And Keaton, who is eight months. My word, ten kids. One more, and that's a football team. <laughs> Which one are you going to do? My dream in growing up was I always wanted 12 kids to live in the home with a white picket fence. And for the most part, I filled the majority of my dream. Did you hear that? <laughs> Cameron, come on. I drive truck over the road, and I might take off on a run. I'm gone for at least three days, maybe four. Could wind up being gone for a week. Yeah, that's enough. I quit it. When Dale's home, it's harder in some ways because when he's home, it totally throws the routine off for me. Come on, come on, stop it. Maybe there's more chaos when he's here, even alone with the kids. Hey, the difference between parenting one and parenting ten is the first one gets all of your attention. When you have ten, you're stretched a whole lot more. Chaslin, get down here now. Who else was doing it? It's wild. It's it's like a three ring circus. <laughs> Bryson, give it up. <laughs> Sit up. No, you didn't. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hey, hey. Every day, I feel like I get to the breaking point. Everybody's got to chip in and help. These kids need a little bit more direction. What we feed them, are you going to feed them? Yeah. Um, how about you? We do put faith in the older kids to help out with the younger kids. Carly, pick up. Come on down this side. Mom, there is no one down this side. Carly, um, she does not like to help out around the house. She does not like to lend a hand. You got to keep an eye on it. I know, Mom. She's a very quiet, reserved person, and a lot of times reacts very negatively to having to watch her brothers and sisters. Corbin. Corbin. Her eyes say all. Can I go lay on your bed? Um, you can. Get your shoes on. Logan is the oldest, so he carries a very difficult role in the family because when Dale's gone, he has to be a fill-in for me and be my biggest helper. Get down. Well, then you ask for help. Look at this 15-year-old. Look. He's acting like a dad. Get your shoes on, Corbin. Let go of him. Nolan, let go. I'll clean up half of him if you clean up half of him. It's hard for him to take on a big responsibility, act more like an adult, because he, he, he wants to have his own space. Well, he has to watch younger kids, and he kind of sighs. Why can't a teenager be a teenager? <laughs> Super Nanny, we could really use you in our household. What's supposed to be on it? We'd just like some order. 
Super Nanny, please hurry. We have 10 kids, and we really need your help. <sighs> enough is enough. Hang on in there, Mum and Dad. And hey, kids, I'm on my way. That's my wife, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi. Good to meet Hi, you. Hi. This Hello. is the biggest family that I've ever helped, and oh yeah, it's going to be an adventure. Well, this is a very large family, to say the least. <laughs> to have Joe come into my house and observe us it was a little bit unnerving because, of course, nobody ever wants criticism. So, you know, we all think we're perfect. You don't need a hit, Chaslin. No, just get away from her. Stop. Ah. Quit it. No. Typically, Dad being a truck driver means that he's only home a few days a week. But from what I can see, when he is home, he's not very supportive. He doesn't do much. Guys, can you stop that? Yeah. I think the kids have lost some respect in listening to him or obeying him when he's home. Why don't you go stand in the corner? No. Yes. I don't think he knows how to handle the kids, and they don't listen to him as much as my mom. Which school? Then my dad leaves somewhere, like not the house, but he's always somewhere else, like outside in the garage. It seems to me that mom's just given up asking dad to help out with the kids. Why don't you feel like you can put this one down and take him over there? Um, because it ends up with a fight in there between like he and Bryson or whatever, so I'll end up just taking him back anyways. Well, well why can't don't deal with it? He he I, I sometimes I just don't think he I just don't think he does deal with it. But there is another family member that she relies on to help her. I saw that Logan was given the task to look after the kids with mum. I mean, he is Mr. Mum. We're going to be gone for a little bit. Logan is in charge. In submission, I had seen that Logan helps out a lot with the kids. So what I did was send mum and dad out so I could see exactly how Logan manages those kids. Cameron, no. You cannot have the bubbles. No. No spillies. He gets kind of frustrated when the kids are misbehaving when mom and dad are out. Get out of the office. I don't really enjoy watching over that many kids at one time. It's just too stressful, yeah. it's too chaotic. Corbin? Corbin? <laughs> Shazlin and... Get out. Corbin? Corbin? Stop. Stop. How about you try? Corbin, just, just go. You, you... Why don't you go upstairs? By the time Mum and Dad got back, Logan was absolutely numb from having to take care of those kids. He's stressed out. I was really eager to talk to Logan, and so I had a conversation with him that really spoke volumes. You're, you're like a like a, a manny, a nanny. Yeah. Okay, so so when does Logan get to uh, hang out with his buddies and just chill? Not very often. Really. This 15-year-old doesn't get a chance to be a 15-year-old and hang out with his friends. So he is robbed of his teenage years at the moment. He's got to be raising his siblings. You feel like it's your responsibility? No. I mean, they're not my kids. I mean, they're my brothers, but they're not my kids. It's, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not a parent. It's not my responsibility to discipline them, to be watching them. Do you actually say to them, or do you feel like you can't? Or... It's my parents. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I feel like I can say that. I mean, it's kind of like... I've kind of stepped it in there a little bit, and my mom just kind of blows at me. Just kind of, I mean, she really gets mad, like, you know, it's your responsibility as the oldest. It's too much. Sometimes to the point where it's like, uh, you know, I've gotten sick over it. Where you live with migraines, panic attacks? I mean, what do you... you uh, I've had one panic attack before. Yeah. For a 15-year-old child to have this because the burden of the responsibility they're given at such a young age, T to me, is is just not right. I do have thoughts like I gotta find somewhere else to go. You know, I'm I'm out of here because I shouldn't be living a life like this. Coming up on Super Nanny. When things go wrong, mom blames the kids. 
There they stand. Someone just got hurt. And Joe has harsh words for both parents. Right now, you're in cuckoo land, the pair of you. When Super Nanny returns. So do all the kids play outside? Yes. And, and who takes care of them outside? Usually the older kids are supposed to keep an eye on the younger kids. Right. I went out to have a look. No. What do you like anymore? The kids were just roughhousing, but when Mum saw what was going on, she just flew off the handle with Carly. You stop it! You know. I'm, not, I'm not doing anything. So yeah. You stop it from happening. You're the oldest one out there. You don't just sit there and watch it. These parents are not taking on their responsibilities. Instead, they're allowing their teenage kids to take on the responsibilities that they should be doing. Right Me being 14 is hard because I have so much responsibility, like, with the kids. No, you don't want to help it. No, you're not going back outside. You chose to come in. A while later, Carly and Chaslin wanted to go outside, but Mum was having none of it. They can't help outside, they can't help inside. That's what they do, is what they want to do. But you're feeling what? What are you feeling? Well, I, mean, I get mad at them because they're the, you know, second oldest, third oldest. You expect them to look after the kids outside, and they've not done that, and inside, and they're not right, doing that Right, and either. they can't do this either. Yeah. They can't do, see? There they stand, someone just got hurt. Well, because you were talking. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Right now, I need to take a breather. I think for the first time in doing this Super Nanny show, I, I bit my tongue and I had to walk out. Yeah. I was angry. I was angry. I was very angry. This mother has 10 kids. It's her responsibility to make sure that her children are safe. How can she have a go at these children for not babysitting the kids when they're kids themselves? So I actually sneaked upstairs to speak to Carly and Chaslin to find out exactly what had happened. What Mum had to say, what do you feel about that? I'm really angry because I, I, I do help out with her and I do watch the kids when I'm out there. My mom doesn't know like half the thing that's going on around here. Carly's very upset and she's angry because I don't feel that these children feel they can say what they really do feel. If she knew how you felt, do you think she would give you time of day just to be able to reach out and give you a hug? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm? Look, the fact is, Mum and Dad chose to have 10 kids, but the older ones are paying the price for that because they're neglecting them. If Mum and Dad don't start talking to these kids, then they're going to start moving further and further away from them at a crucial time in their life. For most of the day, Dad wasn't involved with the kids. But then Corbin started to irritate him, and we saw a different side of Dad. What are you writing, Corbin? What are you writing, Corbin? She wrote it. You throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away, Corbin. It's Corbin, throw it away. It's her no. Throw it away now. Throw it away now. Throw it away now. I didn't do. I mean, it's not. Throw it away now. Dad had hardly grumbled all day. And then all of a sudden, that flew off the handle. I mean, it, it's very unsettling. Later on in the day, I did have a chance to talk to Mum about the obvious family planning. It's unbelievable to me that this lady still wants two more kids to make 12 when she's seriously struggling with the 10 that she has already. It's crazy. You had this dream I did. of wanting 12 kids. Yeah. You're at 10 now. So are you going to go for the other two? You know, <laughs> I would like to. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's Dale and I are at different stages. Dale just had his 50th birthday, and I think he's just realizing, you know, I'm 50, I'm getting older. So I think we haven't, he and I haven't come to the agreement with that yet. So you're having safe sex at the moment? No. No. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So, no, so you could end up you know, coming, you could have happens, another one then. If it happens, it happens. Watch out. Watch out. These parents are not resolving this conversation, and at the same time, they are sexually active and they're not being responsible. What happens? The inevitable. Then what? That's okay. 
I'm off for the evening. OK. But I'll see you tomorrow morning sharp. OK. And we'll have a good family meeting. Night, night, sweetie. Oh, mm. look at me. He's absolutely knackered. I'm eager to come back tomorrow because these parents are going to get a stiff talking to. There are some serious issues here. After all I've seen yesterday, I need to get straight to the point. Good morning. Let's talk about Logan. He's 15 years old. He can't even be a kid. He can't even hang out with his friends as a 15-year-old because he's too busy playing dad around the house. Logan, do this. Logan, do that. Logan, take the children. The boy has had a panic attack. Ever had one of them? No? No. The first thing you think when you have one is that you're dying. Is that fair? No. Right now, you're in cuckoo land, the pair of you. You're in cuckoo land. You know, Carly really needs to be able to talk to you. She, she needs to be able to look up to you. What do you want her to take from you? I would hope Carly would be able to say, you know, my mother inspired me because she understood me, because she lifted me up, because... Do you honestly think she could say that right now? I, I don't think right now she could say that, no. Nah. But you know what, if we were to be really truthful, you probably didn't have a mum that said that with you, did you? Mm -hmm. So, as a mother, why don't you take what you didn't have and give that to your daughter so that they can have? So that your daughter doesn't have to grow up and have loads of babies to get the same needs met. Right? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? I'll make a big change. Just let our kids be kids. Just let me have fun. If what I've had to say today has touched a raw nerve, then I know I'm talking to two parents who've got feeling. And that's a good thing, because that means we can work on all of that. OK, thank you. Coming up on Super Nanny. Mom and Dad discuss a delicate subject. I can always have my dream. I'm allowed. Don't pop it. And later, the family reveals an earth-shattering secret to Joe. I have to speak up one other issue, too, that's been a huge source of contention. And I think Dale knows what I'm getting at. When Super Nanny returns. I do need to do is to sit down and have a frank conversation with mum and dad about family planning because it's obvious they're not talking. We brought up in the meeting the importance of becoming more consciously aware of your family planning and I do think that's something that needs to be spoken about and something that needs to be resolved. It was nice to have somebody like a third party, kind of like a mediator. I, I'm happy with 10. Okay. I do feel like I can't you know, take care of them like I should or attend as much attention as I should. I just always wanted a large family. I always wanted a dozen. I love kids. It is hard for me to hear Dale say um, enough is enough. I understand your view. I, you know, my dream was my dream and I'm not, you're not well, going to take it away. Not... It's painfully obvious that mum wants to fulfill her dream of having a dozen kids. And she doesn't care how she gets number 12 or what has to be sacrificed as long as she gets number 12. You said that your dream was your dream and nothing's going to stop you. I, that just means you can't take away my dream. I can always have my dream, whether or not it's fulfilled or not. I can always have my dream. I'm allowed. Don't pop it. I'm, I'm not. He's I... not. You're taking it personally. Well, why should, you know, that's his opinion. I'm allowed to mine. I don't agree with it. But everybody has dreams, but you've got to be realistic with some of those dreams as well, OK? And I'm saying, you know, we're willing to make changes, or at least I'm willing to make changes for that. And if I have to carry more of a burden, then I'm willing to do that. It's just not you carrying it, though. Your kid's always going to carry it. And you have to be able to resolve that. 
You have to, otherwise it's irresponsible. It's obvious that they both want different things, but what I feel is very important is that they're actually talking now, and that's a good thing. I haven't really seen Dad interact with the children, and I know Mum doesn't fully trust Dad to handle the children, so it was important for me to let Mum go out so that she could see Dad is capable of looking after the kids just for that short period of time. That one belongs to you, Logan. Um, the green one I've got here belongs to yourself, Carly. But there is one catch. I've given the four elder children T-shirts to wear that say off duty. So Dad can't rely on them. Bye! As Dad found out, looking after ten kids on your own is more than a handful. Why don't you go play with your brother? I'm going to warm up lunch. Come on. Come here. <laughs> Nolan, get in here, buddy. Nolan. You hold it for one second. It's get this. He's off duty. Okay. Stop! <laughs> Nolan, get in here right now. What are you getting into? You know, Dad did handle the kids with confidence, and he did a did an okay job. But now I'm even more puzzled at why Mum really deep down doesn't trust Dad with the kids. Who was that? There she is. Pretty good. <laughs> now that Dad's found this new confidence with the kids, what I want to be able to do is set up a technique so that the children realise that the parents appreciate them getting this quality time. What I want to do with this calendar is basically to jot down with the kids a particular event on a particular day that you guys know you can stick to. There are many times when the kids say, hey, you know, I like to go, go, go-kart. OK, yeah, OK, let's go next week. And it's just like, it's kind of like forgotten by us. Logan? What would you like to do? Hmm. Let's take that chick out, isn't it? Hmm? It's that girl, isn't it? You want to take that girl out, right, to the, to the cinema, take that yeah. movie? I put on the calendar go, uh, going out with a friend, you know, ice skating. The last time I went out to live a regular 15-year-old's life, I, re I can't even remember. Corbin, what are you going to do? Come on, man. Amazon or the movie? Amazon. What's Amazon? What's like Amazon? A, like a play place where they have games oh, and they have laser tag. There's no backing out of those calendar days because it's something that we promised them. And I think, you know, the scar would be a deep scar, you know, if we didn't follow through with that. OK, so let's pin this calendar up. I mean, I want these kids to know that we mean what we say. There's no time like the present, and it's so important to give Carly that time with her mother that she's so desperately craving. Last time I ever did anything with my mom was like about a year ago. Sometimes she would say that me and her wouldn't grow up like mother daughter thing. That never happened. Carly and Amy. Let's go out. Right. Joel, see you later. We're here for your manicures and pedicures. Yes, we are. I like that that dark one, Carly. Do you? Mm -hmm. Which one's your favorite? The dark blue one. Yeah. My mom and I went to the nail salon. It was fun having time to talk to her. Now you can bug mom to do this more often. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. I think it was good that she and I had an opportunity to talk together and just enjoy even the quiet moments together. We think Carly. Did that feel good? Yeah. I hope that the pair of them continue to have these little mother and daughter dates because it'd be healthy for the pair of them. Coming up on Super Nanny, Logan reveals a secret to his dad. So you felt like running away from it all? Yes. And mom makes dad reveal an even darker secret of his own. We have to speak up one other issue, too, that's been a huge source of contention. And I think Dale knows what I'm getting at. When Super Nanny returns.
This afternoon, I have turned my attention to Logan so mum and dad can see exactly the undue burden that has been put on him looking after all of these kids. So we've got more work this afternoon for the pair of you. We're going to go into the other room here. OK. Logan's afraid to speak to his parents, so what I have done is set up a curtain so that he can freely express himself without feeling intimidated by mum and dad's reactions. I, mean, I don't want to whine, but the responsibilities, you know, have been a little too much. I don't, I don't want to seem like, you know, I can't handle them. I mean, I can, just not for the time period that I've been. It makes me, like, angry and upset. Sometimes I just can't deal with it, you know. It just kind of gets me to the point where I just kind of want to want to walk off. What do you mean by walk off? Well, I guess leave. So you felt like running away from it all? Yes. And have you felt like you've been able to come to mom and dad and tell them that? Not so much. Del, I asked you to pull back the curtain. I, I did run away, Logan, when I was, I was probably about 17. Because I felt as though that my dad really wasn't listening to me. I just want to keep the communication open. Just say, hey, we got to sit down and talk. I'll take responsibility of the kids when I'm home rather than unload it on you. That's my job. I looked at Logan's face at the end of the discussion, and I did not see a sense of relief. And I knew what that was from. I have to speak up one other issue, too, that's been a huge source of contention, you know, that has honestly caused Logan to be in a situation that he shouldn't necessarily have to be in. And I think Dale knows what I'm getting at. This family had been holding back something from me whilst I was teaching, and now I was about to find out exactly what it was. Yeah, I was curious. I just felt like I owed it to both Logan and to Dale. As ugly as that skeleton is, I just felt like that was very important to bring out. I guess at first I was hoping it wouldn't come up. Everything else was brought up to Joe, so I thought, well, there's no sense of that being hidden. Um, drinking has been an issue. Dale uses that to help with his stress, forcing Logan to grow up and see things that he shouldn't have to see. When he does drink and it gets out of hand, things happen, and there have been a couple times when he's actually had to go to the hospital. Logan and I have had to take all the kids to soccer games while Dad was in the back of the van, passed out. So alcohol for you led you in a place where your family became the victim of that as well, is that correct? OK. Yes. If Dad doesn't deal with his drinking problem promptly and directly, he's going to continue to affect this family. And that's no joke. This, to me, is, is a, a major breakthrough because while you're prepared to suffocate yourself, you will take everybody else with you. I was glad that my mom brought the, uh, the issue up with my dad. Now I hope that he does consider getting help for it. I'm sorry, OK, Ma? I do love you, OK? Don't ever forget, all right? The seriousness of Dad's drinking problem is affecting every member of this family, and this can only be changed by him. I'm actually going to go for several days. OK. It is time for me to leave this family and let them get on with what they've been taught. However, going away means that I can really start to look at solutions and get the proper information that's necessary in order to help Dad move forward. See you when I get back. OK. When I come back, I'm going to need to talk to Dad more about the drinking issue and where he's going to take this now that everything's out in the open. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Dear. Bye bye. Coming up on Super Nanny, Logan gets to go on a date. I was really looking forward to this. Really? Yeah. Aw, that's so cute.
And later, Joe confronts Dad about his drinking. Guess I can't do without it. Uh, the fuck? The alcohol. When Super Nanny returns. So I've been gone for a few days. You guys have been left to really get on with it without me. And what we're going to do is take a look at this so we know exactly what's going on here. Here, walking. <laughs> I'll hold your hand, but if I fall, I'm going to let go. All right, ready? Ready? You got to gotta hold it. OK, ready? <gasps> hey, this isn't so bad. Oh, this isn't this as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> like that little girl like, can like do like twirls and like yeah, skate like, backwards. I know, right? <laughs> Don't show off. So what else is new? Nothing. Nothing? Just a real boring day. How I was really? really looking forward to this. Really? Yeah. Aw, that's so cute. I mean, really, I mean, what we're we looking at here, we're looking at your teenage son having a chance to, to be a teenager. You know, he's got his little first love there and he's taking her out cute. ice skating. Really <laughs> cute. Really nice and, and really to the point that we realise the importance of Logan having that time mm -hmm. just to do the things that he wants to be able to do like a normal teenager would do. So I'm very pleased to see that. I, I very much am. Here, can have some juice? Ah! Okay. I'll be back. Get your feet up. Here we go. Look, look. <laughs> OK. I know. Oh, watch your leg. Here we go. Here we go. Give me a hug. Ah, back. That's the nail, I tell you, right on the head there. You got a break. <laughs> yeah, that Logan's just chilling. Funny. <laughs> How sweet is that? What do you think about what you just saw? I like that. Now? Yeah. How would you like about that? Yeah, just being out there with the with the kids. You know, just being the kids. Uh, you know, just. Are you proud of that man you yeah. just saw? Because yeah. that's you. Yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah, been... Dale. Look what you're. Look what you are capable right. of doing. I hope this is a real eye opener for mm -hmm. you. There it is. You know, the man that, that that you are, and there are certain things that you know what you need to kick out the backside to get rid of, so that you can continue being mm -hmm. that father. Seriously. That's so rewarding to see. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the kids' concerns, because I think it really elaborates on what I've just been talking about. I don't want people. I don't want, I don't want them to go. No. I don't want them to go. She wouldn't even me. She just wouldn't get it. My dad gets real mad. She just gets it. Like, she just kind of makes it better. And what's going to happen when they leave? They, they have seen the changes. They, they want it to remain, and and they're worried about that. In in a way, it's it's them saying indirectly, please, please find the strength for us. Please promise us that that you'll do what you're supposed to do because we expect you to provide safety for us, stability, for us to know that we can count on you. And if right now you go, where am I going to find the strength to do this for myself? Then you know what? Find it for your kids right now. Find it for your kids. I have to do this for my kids. I want to do this for my kids. There's no room for you to recognize the beauty in, in raising the kids because your own critic was too busy wanting to put you down with the drink and stuff like that. So there's no room because the, the drink don't care about that. Drink don't want that. The drink wants to destroy everything. So these kids are going to need to know that you guys are, are willing to continue to make the effort and, and keep things the way that they are. So are we ready to create more stability for them? Yeah, because we do want it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's get on with some more work then. Okay. okay. Coming up on Super Nanny, Joe confronts Dad about his drinking. As I'm talking to you, I can smell alcohol on your breath. But will he take action? If Del don't want this enough, then everyone's going to pay the price for that. When Super Nanny returns.
Dad's drinking problem is affecting the family. We know that. I need to sit and talk to Dad about this and see if he really understands the consequence of that. Really, the, the, the abscess that had erupted and left all these surface issues that needed to be resolved. That's what I want to talk to you about now, OK? Because as I'm talking to you, I can smell alcohol on your breath. It's, it's a major, major concern. And ultimately, everything that's been put in place here is going to drown. Right. I leave this family thinking, God, you know, if Dell don't want this enough, then everyone's going to pay the price for that. You've got to want to change it. You've got to want things to be different. Do you think that you need help? I do. Guess I can't do without it. Uh, With what? The alcohol. In a couple of days that I was off, I did some research. And even tonight, there's a support group that you could go to if you wanted to, if you wanted to get help. But if you want to, I'll tell you one thing, I'll come on the car journey with you. I'll come with you. OK. And you know what? If we get up to that door and you go, I can't do it, you know what? I ain't going to judge you. You know, when somebody's offering you that kind of help and support, I mean, not, not a whole lot of people do that. I guess the reason why I don't sound too eager because I'm ashamed. It means you're feeling. If you feel ashamed, it means that you felt you're not in denial. You know, Amy just asked me, well, if you had one legacy to leave to your kids, what would it be? And I said, I, I can't even, I can't even think. So you feel bad about it, but at least you've owned up. At least you turn around and go, you know what, I feel bad that I did this. But at least you're saying you know why. It's brought you that much closer as a family to feeling, you know, look, let's get help with this. Let's change this. I mean, to me, this is, this is so much bigger. Right. You've got beer stash in the house. No. Mm, should we go and clear it out? Dad's been secretly drinking and hiding beer all around the house. And what we need to do first is to clear out that beer because it's dangerous. There are kids in that house. Where is that one? Ready. For me, watching Dad collect all these beer cans, it was a clear illustration to the depth of this man's problem. All right, so now what do we do? First, tell my wife. All right. Right. I'm behind you. It took a lot of courage for this man to come clean, be accountable, and to take responsibility for his actions. And the first person that he wanted to talk to was his wife. Hey, I'm going to go to the support group tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Good. And uh, Joe's going to ride with me. OK. OK? Good. Good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for lying. It's no. okay. No, it's not. He told me that he was going to get some help for abuse of drinking, so that was a huge step for him. So that's the first step. I know. That's what you need to do. I know. And then, of course, it was time for Dad to speak to the young man who had basically picked up the slack. Hey, look, come here for a minute. He's 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 a good kid. Uh, I, I kind of hate to see him have grown up as fast as he did. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to the support group tonight. All right? OK. Good. I'm sorry for everything, OK? That's OK. I, I think my dad's taken a big step of trying to, you know, resolve his problems. And I really, uh, I'm proud of him. Ready? I'm going to be taking Dad to his first meeting, and this is a huge step for him. I'll see you in an hour. OK. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I was just glad to go in and just see other people in the same same predicament. So I was like, well, I go. I guess I'm not the only one. Hey, baby, how are you? Oh. Hey, 
Hey, dude. Hi, baby. Hey, man. I think it's very encouraging that Dell's family see him taking this first step because it's going to allow them to feel that he's actually doing something about it. Amy just said to me, how did that do? I go, oh, ask him yourself, ask him yourself. Hey, tell me. We met a few people, about eight, eight others in there. I, I guess I feel very, very happy that he did that because, again, that's a good first step in the right direction towards him healing himself. Did he feel good? Yeah, yeah. Were you glad you went? Yeah, yeah. Good. I am really proud that this family had the courage to open up the cupboard door on a really dark secret that they had been keeping for a very long time. I want a big group hug from all of you. Yeah. Come here, seriously. Ah. All of you. Squeeze it all, all in. You you fit. Fit. If you fit, if you fit all I would say it is a happier house. I believe I am a better dad. Yeah, it's going to be uh, something I will continue. Okay. If Joe had not come here, I don't honestly know what would have happened. It could have led up to the kids and I leaving. It could have led, led up to premature death on Dale's part. You know, it, it a lot of ugly things certainly could have happened. Come on, give me a hug. You're not too big for a hug. Uh, you're not too big for a hug. Uh, I hope that, uh, you know, my dad continues to go to this group, and I hope that, you know, we all start to get along better and we can work to uh, become closer and, you know, enjoy each other a little more. Take care. All right, I love you. Take care. Take care of yourself, mate. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. I just hope that this family continue to find the strength and the courage every day to move just a little step forward. If you know a family suffering from alcoholism, there is hope and help out there. Alalon provides hope and help for families affected by loved ones drinking. Visit www.alanon.alateen.org for more information.